And later today, both sides will give their closing arguments in the Gwyneth Paltrow ski crash trial before the jury make their decision. Of course, just a moment, we'll hear from a journalist who joined Gwyneth on one of her Goop cruises. But first, Danny Bear is in LA, where Gwyneth's accuser, Teddy Sanderson, got a bit of a grilling overnight, didn't he? And, uh, and also, Gwyneth got an apology. Certainly did, Lorraine, certainly did. Yes, today, or should I say yesterday, was day seven of eight in court for Gwyneth. And the judge presiding over the child made it very clear that he wants both sides to give their closing arguments by this afternoon so that the jury has enough time to deliberate and come up with a consensus. So who's going to make the $300,000 decision of who's telling the truth? Well, as Gwyneth arrived yesterday in court, Mr. Sarnison was already there. And the two of them did their utmost effort to avoid eye contact with each other at all times. Um, Gwyneth's defense team actually yesterday uh, did their whole full medical uh, brigade, should I say. They brought in a radiologist, a neurologist, a neuropsychologist, and a forensic psychologist, leaning on medical analysis rather than relying on Gwyneth's husband or friends uh, to make their case, essentially. And the experts called by Gwyneth's team testified that brain scans, uh, brain scans, sorry, suggest Sanderson's cognitive abilities began to decline years before the ski, the ski crash with Gwyneth. So they challenged claims made by his doctors last week, uh, attributing his disorientation and memory loss to post-concussion syndrome. And in the final hours of their last full day to call witnesses, Gwyneth's defense called Terry Sanderson back to the stand. And instead of, you know, revisiting the medical history and expert testimonies, they actually questioned him about all of his luxury adventure travel that he's been doing ever since the crash occurred. So this guy faced photo after photo of him gallivanting around the world, riding camels in Morocco. Um, he was seen trekking up Machu Picchu in Brazil, I'm um, sorry, in Peru. He was, uh, you know, gallivanting around Europe, going to Switzerland, Italy, Germany, France, and many, many more countries. So basically, the images were aimed to uh, contradict, essentially, what his people were saying. That's why he's got anxiety and depression and memory loss, and uh, which his attorneys maintain links to the crash itself. Ah, so okay. that was that. Very, that was that. very dramatic. Very dramatic. And, and then there, there was an apology, though, wasn't there? Absolutely, Lorraine. Terry Sarnison <laughs> apologized directly to Gwyneth for a comment he made in a 2019 press conference uh, saying that Gwyneth was screaming like King Kong in a jungle uh, when the crash occurred. And he basically apologized and said, I'm so sorry. What I really meant to say was she screamed like a woman being chased by King Kong in a jungle. So... I don't know what was worse, actually. The, no, the first I don't, comment or the, or I don't the... either. And I've just seen a very disturbing <laughs> image that popped up there. Um, thank you. Thank you, Danny. Um, fascinating. Yeah. And, and joining me now is journalist Charlie Gowans Eglinton, who met Gwyneth Paltrow when she attended Gwyneth's Goop at Sea Wellness Cruise. So this is a cruise um, that you can go to if you are a huge fan. And is there a sort of a little Gwyneth section of the cruise? Yes, right. you, basically you've got your special sticker and okay. it's a VIP pass to anything Gwyneth. Green juices. Ofs. Obviously, <laughs> at all hours of the day. Uh, you were allowed alcohol, surprisingly. Oh, OK. Um, but anything you might fancy, you might want to go into an, a crystal-lined sauna, perhaps. We did. Somebody started playing the guitar. It was about as woo-woo as you might imagine. <laughs> 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 I did some yoga, posed on a ceramic egg. We had celebrity exercise classes, uh, which were very intense, and the celebrity trainer's dog was wearing a Prada backpack. Well, of course it was. Obviously. Of course um, it was. Lisa Rinna turned up oh. in a bucket hat, uh, right. just, you know, so that she wasn't mobbed, but to hear Gwyneth speak. Right. And we did some tarot readings. We learned about her anxiety. It was a peculiar nine days at sea. I imagine it was. Do you get to see the woman herself? Does she yes, kind of she, parachute in? She, <laughs> it seemed like she might have choppered in. Right. Uh, she descended a spiral staircase onto a stage in an amazing jersey suit. So She likes the soft... Yes. A soft it was jersey. Kind of an ideal work-from-home yeah, yeah, situation yeah, 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 yeah. and a white trainer, of course, clutching a giant bottle of green juice. But, surprisingly, she was actually a bit hungover, a bit the worse for wear. What, 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 what? She'd been celebrating her 50th birthday. Yes. I assumed that for Gwyneth Paltrow, that might mean some silent meditation with yes. friends. Or, or one nut. A An single almond. nut with a candle in it. <laughs> but no, she joked about she having is. taken a tranquilizer on the train. She said she was extra sexy today because she was actually a bit hoarse. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. So, and what was the reaction of all the other girls that had been there? I mean, you were there in a work capacity. You were there to explore this, to find out about it, um, you know, and, and, and obviously to write about it. Of course, it's your job. But the rest of the people that were there, was it almost sort of cult-like? I have to be careful how you say cult. Was it cult-like? Yes, I think half of the people there wanted Gwyneth to back their CBD businesses. Oh, OK. And the other half thought she was going to lock eyes with them and they'd become best friends. Right. Hysteria is how I would describe... Really? Gosh. ..when she actually arrived on the ship. Right. And what was she like? Was she quite... Because she does get the reputation of being quite cold and aloof and all of that. Did you find her like that? No, she was no. really warm. Oh, she was good. talking about her kids, she was talking about her life, she was... Her friend, her best friend was in the front row of the audience and actually got a bit weepy. Um, I don't know, but they're, they're, it's a Californian thing, isn't it? That maybe it is. It's a different level of sincerity to yes. what I'm used to. Yes. Um, but it was all very sincere. It was all very warm and friendly. Yeah. And it felt like she was sharing confidences with us. Oh, so interesting. I mean, she's very clever. It's, a, it's an amazing business model, because whilst we over here mock at the eggs that you stick up your noonie, um, you know, and we go tee hee 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 because we're very juvenile, um, in America they buy it. They absolutely buy it. They, can, they buy the whole package, don't they? They do. It's worth 250 million. Wow. Her business. Jeez. And she's selling jungle gyms for your children, pastels, for you know, £30,000. It's crazy. Do you think this whole trial, because it is utterly bizarre and weird and surreal, will in any way damage the brand? Because she has a brand now, you know, gives the brand. Do you think it will? I don't think so. No. I think there was a risk if she had turned up and she was very sort of repenting of, of anything she might have done and she was apologetic. If she'd tried to go relatable, worn some M&S, as people do, you know, Colleen Rooney, wearing some Zara on yeah, trial. Yeah, if yeah, she'd yeah, tried yeah. to go that route and seemed like an every woman, I right. think it would have actually been damaging to the brand. Right. Because if you're spending 500 quid on a serum for your face, it's because you want to look like Gwyneth at 50, but also live her whole lifestyle. Right. And I, be a bit of it, I don't think she can be relatable. That's not what she's selling. No, she's not. And, and kind of given up on acting, really. She doesn't have to. She doesn't have to know. She sells lots of candles She's smelling of weird things. Certainly given up on, on acting if that trial is anything to go by because she is not bothering to look like she can be bothered to be there. Gotcha. She's an Oscar winner. If she wanted us to think that she was taking it very seriously, she could convince us. That's true. That's true. What an insight. Thanks ever so much. Great <laughs> to talk to you. Great piece as well. Thank you.